Hey, Clemson family, we have got a fantastic guest joining us in this episode to talk about what makes Garrett Riley such a great hire for Dabo Sweeney and the Tigers offense. I'm Daniel Shirley. That guest is Sam Kahn, the tech expert from The Athletic. So excited to have Sam on to talk about Garrett, and we're going to talk about the basketball team that keeps standing in first place. Great to see big things happening at Little John. I'm Bill Zimmerman. Welcome to episode 59 of the Reign Supreme Allway podcast. A lot of you are joining us at youtube.com slash Clemson kickoff, and we are glad you found us there. Go ahead and bump that subscribe button or follow us on your favorite podcast app. We are thrilled to be joined by Sam Kahn Jr. He's a senior writer at theathletic.com who's been doing a great job covering college football and recruiting in the state of Texas for a long time now. So we're going to get his perspective on Garrett Riley coming to campus. Sam, thanks so much for taking time with us. Hey, no problem. Thanks for having me. So just in general, what, what's your impression of Garrett Riley from the three years that he spent in the Lone Star State at TCU and SMU? Maybe some things you saw that we couldn't have seen not knowing to keep an eye on the guy, right? Yeah, no, really, really smart guy. Uh, comes off as real personable. I remember the first time I met him was when he was at SMU. And just I thought really intelligent, good play caller, uh, thinks about, you know, thinks about offense and thinks about football in, in a way that I think matches up with his talent. He, he think he was very good about adapting what he did to what he had uh, in terms of skill set. Uh, when I, I think of TCU and you see how well they use Max Duggan running the football. And, and I know that was part of Duggan's skill set, but, but he made sure – to make that a major part of the offense as opposed to it just being dug and running, you know, when he wanted to, but uh, you know, definitely was an up and comer, definitely good in the run game. I think they had good run game at TCU, they had good run game at SMU uh, and, and provided, I think a little bit of a different perspective and a different uh, flavor to the offense than maybe what Sonny Dykes brings where Sonny comes from the, the Mike Leach tree uh, with the, with the air raid background. Uh, it certainly there, there's some, uh, chemistry and there's some crossover in, in those two but but I thought the way Riley ran the run game I think even going back to, to his time at App State uh, that definitely added an element that I think made SMU's and TCU's offense is really effective. Sam so do you think Clemson fans will see even more Will Shipley in this offense? Yeah probably so I, I would think so because that that was the one thing when you look at what they did this last year at TCU the thing that went I think under discussed nationally was how valuable Kendra Miller was to their offense. Duggan was the Heisman finalist. He, he was the one who got a lot of the ink. But Kendra was really the guy who made that offense go. And when they were in the second half of games, even when they were behind the Oklahoma State and Kansas State double digits in the second half, one thing that Riley did that I was impressed by that a lot of coaches don't is he stuck with a run game. He, he kept handing it to Kendra Miller. And if you go back and look at his splits, Kendra throughout most of the season had more second half carries than he did first half carries throughout the season. So uh, that, that to me underscored how important the run game is to him and, and how it makes everything go. And that's kind of why you see when you think back to the Kansas State game in the middle of the season, Quentin Johnson ends up, you know, wide open down the field, you know, for a 60-yard bomb. Well, part of that's because, guess what, they still have to respect the run because Garrett's not the type that just, hey, threw out the play sheet and let's throw it 45 times as we're behind. He never really did that, and I thought TCU benefited from that. So, yeah, for if you're a Clemson fan, I, I would expect that, yeah, you're going to see a lot of Will Shipley, and, and that you're not going to see him get away from the run game just because the score is at a certain juncture. Sam, what about his work with the quarterbacks? I and mean, obviously, Clemson is going to turn to Kate Klubnick. Christopher Vizina will be there. What will he bring to those guys to kind of elevate the Clemson passing game? Really good teacher. You know, he played the position. Obviously, not he wasn't highly successful. He was he was a backup quarterback at, at Stephen F. Austin in college, but but he's got a background there. And I thought he was really good in terms of developing and teaching guys. Tanner Mordecai turned into certainly one of the best, if not the best quarterback in the American Athletic Conference under Riley at SMU. And then Duggan, you saw, if you would have asked TCU fans before this season, hey, I'm going to place a bet on Max Duggan getting to the Heisman uh, Trophy ceremony, and they, they would have laughed at you because Duggan is a really talented guy, but he had never quite figured it out in his first three years. He didn't always have great touch on his passes. 
His footwork could be a little disjointed at times. He, he definitely bailed out of the pocket and took off running a little bit earlier than I think you would prefer that he do sometimes. Didn't always take care of the ball great. And all those things flipped this year. And the biggest difference and the biggest factor in that is Garrett Riley is you saw his footwork change and his footwork got better. You saw he started throwing guys open. He started putting a little bit more touch on the ball. Uh, certainly part of that is chemistry with the, with the current roster because, you know, he did have a lot of guys that had been around him for multiple years. So some of it is, is not just coaching. Some of it is, hey, I've been playing with Kendrick Miller for a couple of years. I've been playing with Quentin Johnson for two, three years. I've been playing with Tay Barber and Darius Davis for two, three years. That, that all mattered too. But you could just see technically Duggan was just a better, better, more accurate, more precise passer this year. And I thought Riley deserved a lot of credit for that, both in how he taught, how he developed them, and also how he called the games. Like I said, he, the way he used Duggan in the run game to, to get moved the chains on first down, or even at times end up getting in the end zone, uh, really threw defenses off and it, it opened the field for Duggan and it turned him into a guy who's probably going to get drafted now. Whereas if you ask me at the start of last season, I would, he was behind Chandler Morris for a year. So. I don't know that I would expect that he'd be drafted, but now he's probably going to get drafted somewhere in the late rounds in the uh, in the upcoming NFL draft. A lot of times, Sam, it feels like the last couple of years, Clemson hasn't used its tight ends. Is that something that he will do, or is that a hey, who's the best talent? We'll make that work with them. Yeah, I think I think that's very much a let's see let's see what they have and how they do it. They they did bring in a guy this year in uh, Jared Wiley, the Texas transfer at tight end, big six seven guy. He got involved a little bit. He wasn't what I would call a primary target for TCU, but he was more of a, hey, here's a big guy across the middle. Let's get it to him once in a while. You know, so he wasn't. And I think part of that is also because they had so much talent at receiver because they had right. Quentin Johnson, Tay Barber, Darius Davis, Savion Williams. Those guys were really explosive receivers. And so it was hard to, you know, it's not it's not a knock on Wiley and it's not a knock on, on any of the tight ends, but it's just the better options were those guys and Kendra Miller. So Wiley was probably like fifth on the list in terms of where, where you're targeting, but he still ended up with 24 catches. So, uh, so, so he will use the tight end for sure. Uh, they used Grant Calcaterra when Calcaterra was at SMU that, that, and Calcaterra was one of the better receivers they had. So they definitely will use it and Riley has used it in the past, uh, at SMU. So definitely something they will utilize or he will utilize when, when the weapon is there. I know a lot of the, stuff we've read the last couple of years, even on our side at The Athletic, is Clemson's offense feels like it's gotten stale. What do you think Garrett does to turn that around? I think a lot of it is just finding ways to get the ball to your guys quickly and efficiently. The one thing that I loved about Garrett is that, like I said, we, we talked about the run game. He's going to do that. The other thing that he was that was really impressive, you talk to coaches in the Big 12, they talk about the touch game, which is the stuff on the perimeter, the quick bubbles, jet sweeps. Darius Davis on the jet sweeps was really, really huge for them. A lot of misdirection, some counter, a lot of counter plays. You'll, you'll see a lot of counter, which I think is becoming trendy in college football right now. You see a lot of teams use it. Certainly his brother Lincoln Riley uses it a lot too, uh, both at Oklahoma and USC. So I, I think they did a pretty good job of being creative and just finding ways to exploit matchups. They had a lot of really good players. And that's what he'll, he'll have at Clemson. He'll have a lot of really good players. And he's got he's got a really good knack for finding, scheming those guys and getting them open and, and finding ways to get them the ball, you know, one way or another. What about him as a recruiter, Sam? I, you know, obviously that's going to be the, a big piece of the puzzle going forward. Yeah, I think uh, really good about developing relationships with quarterbacks, certainly. that That's one. And, and I think both at the high school level and at, in the portal, because uh, that's, that's one thing that they did heavily both at SMU and TCU. He's able to establish relationships with the recruits. He's uh, high school recruits. He's able to establish relationships with uh, guys in the portal, veterans, guys that have been around. Uh, but again, like I said, I think he's going to be probably closest with the quarterbacks because that's the position that he coaches. Uh, and I think he's done a good job of that. So uh, like I said, personable guy comes off as very laid back. You know, he's a Texas guy. So, you know, we're pretty friendly down here in general. So I think he will fit in. To me, personally, when I sit around him and spend time with him, he'll fit in at Clemson like a glove. Just from what I know of Dabo and how personable he can be and, and the way he seems to interact and his charisma around recruits and families, I think Garrett, maybe not as, maybe not quite, like Dabo I think is very 
animated. I don't think you're going to find Gear that animated. He's he's a little more low key, but but he's once you spend some time around him, he's a great guy, and I think his personality will play over with recruits really really well. I mean, it just sounds like a home run hire, just lights out in every way. Uh, we've heard this, you know, from other people as well, but this level of detail is fascinating. I'm kind of wondering, like, is there any worry for Riley joining Clemson and moving into a higher profile job? Will he miss Sonny Dykes for that matter? Like, is there anything to kind of keep an eye on? I don't anticipate. Certainly there's going to be an adjustment to change because obviously Dabo runs his program his way and it's going to be different from the way Sonny Dykes runs his program. But but that said, I think Garrett was very conscientious of the type of culture that he was going to enter if he took another opportunity because he, there were other chances there. You know, Texas A&M kicked the tires on him for sure. And that's an offer that, you know, he could have taken it if he wanted to. But we we know kind of how things went in conversation this year. So I I don't think he was looking to leave this program under Sonny Dykes and the way that's run to go spend time under Jimbo Fisher after what happened at A&M. I think he he had no shortage of options. And certainly, you know, there was talk about him being in the mix for a head coaching job. You know, the North Texas job ended up opening, of course. Uh, they ended up going with Eric Morris, the uh, offensive corner at Washington State. But, you know, that's one that, that he could have certainly gotten in the mix for if he wanted to. But I think he was very methodical and very selective about if he was going to leave TCU, it was going to have to be for a really good either head coaching job or if it was going to be another coordinator job, it had to be a really good opportunity. And he had to deem it as a fit for himself. And so when I think of the kind of culture that is at Clemson, I think that makes a ton of like when I saw Garrett Riley went to Clemson at first, it was okay, surprising. Wow, they pulled that off. Hey, Dabo pulled off a really, really good hire. But then after you sit and think about it, yeah, it makes a ton of sense because it's a step up. You know, no offense to TCU who just played for the national title, but they're not on Clemson's level from a national standpoint. They haven't won at the level that Clemson has as consistently as Clemson has. So this to me is the natural progression in in Garrett's development and his, I, this tells me that he doesn't want to just take any head coaching job. He wants to take probably a power five head coaching job. And he feels like he's probably going to be better, have a better chance to do that from Clemson than he will from TCU. And I, I don't disagree with that. I think that's a, that's an accurate assessment, but he's also going to do it at a program where they're, they're going to be, they're not going to be shy about how they feel and, and the way they care for players and all that stuff. And I think that that's pretty. I think generally everything that's going on at Clemson is going to be pretty congruent with with how Riley thinks about things and and how he feels. So I think it, it's a really good fit. And then, like you said, I think Dabo knocked it out of the park. I think to be able to get that higher. So let me put it this way: Garrett Riley with Kate Klubnik sounds like a whole hell of a lot of fun, and I think it has a ton of potential. Wow, I think this is the most good news we've had in an episode since the Florida State game, to be honest. So really glad <laughs> to have you join us. Sam, it's been great to talk to you again. I really appreciate it. All the best to you at The Athletic and out there in the Lone Star State. No problem. Thanks for having me, guys. Check us out on social media at Clemson Kickoff, both on Twitter and on Instagram. We are always giving updates between episodes, and especially from people like Sam who are plugged in across the country. Let's go ahead and get into basketball a little bit. A big win for the Tigers. Maybe not big in opponent stature, but big in scoring margin over Georgia Tech Tuesday night. And now Florida State next up on the docket, having had a rough game against Miami. I I thought it was a really efficient win from from Clemson against Georgia Tech. Brad Brownell called it workmanlike. I think that's a really good phrase for it, too. They scored the first 12 points and then really kind of were in control the rest of the game. Georgia Tech's not very good. We know that. But this is how you're supposed to handle those teams. You get on top of them early and really don't give them a chance to win the game. And that's what Clemson did. I was really impressed with how they played against a team that's just not very good. Georgia Tech coach Josh Pastner has been all about trying to get more points on the board. Really weren't doing things on either end of the court against Clemson the other night. And you saw that the Clemson offense really looked a lot better than it did against Virginia Tech. That struggle against Virginia Tech on Saturday. This was a nice bounce back. Clemson shot 52.9% from the floor, 45% on threes, and 81% from the free throw line. So the offense was a lot more crisp. The defense was was really strong throughout. 
It has been a long time since we saw the record this good for the Tigers on the hard court. How did they get that done against Georgia Tech? I thought it was really a complete team effort. Uh, You know, P.J. Hall was terrific. He had 17 points and seven rebounds. He looks like an all-ACC player. Brevin Galloway had a strong game. Hunter Tyson and Chauncey Wiggins was good. were good. Uh, and then Dylan Hunter, I thought, was impressive in his first start at point guard. He scored nine points, but he just ran the offense really efficiently and smartly. So the guys came off the bench, played well as well. So it was, it was really kind of start to finish a, a strong performance, the kind of performance you'd like to see from th- your team when you're playing a team that's overmatched. And th- they've got a couple more of these games like that coming up. They've got Louisville. Uh, struggling. Boston College is not very good. Uh, So you need to take advantage when you're playing those kind of teams. Hopefully they'll take advantage again in Tallahassee. That game will be 5 p.m. Saturday listed for ACC Network. So cross your fingers, we get to see the whole thing, which tends to happen when it airs there. I do want to get into a quick clarification on the last episode. I was talking about Peter Wood's five-star ratings there. Those ratings come from rivals and from ESPN giving him five stars which also gives him five stars in the on three consensus, but his actual on three rating is four stars. Pretty puzzling, but I was glad to be able to track that down. I certainly want to pass that along, keep the record straight. He's going to be a five-star player. Let's just say that. I don't think there's any doubt about that. We will start getting into position by position previews in the upcoming episodes. As we can get some good guests on, we will keep bringing them back. Really appreciate Sam once again, joining us. And we are glad you found us, Clemson family. Check out our homepage, clemsonkickoff.com. You can go through all our past episodes there and then follow us on your favorite podcast app or subscribe at youtube.com slash clemsonkickoff. Until we rejoin you next week, I'm Bill Zimmerman. I'm Daniel Shirley. Go Tigers.